a map at each room and you try to figure out there and there's skip right at least two ways of getting out. Usually there is, if there isn't, that's when you discuss with your family when there is only one way of getting out, you're looking in this room, you have to get out this way and that's what you have to do. You also want to discuss with them once you get out of the building to have a common meeting place, like a, a, a area where everyone knows that if there's a fire and we get out and we get separated, we all have to meet up at this spot, all right? I mean, maybe it's a, a neighbor across the street, or maybe it's a corner store, or maybe it's an intersection, but everyone in your family that lives in that, in that house with you, or apartment, you want them to understand, including the younger kids, that if we have to get out, this is where we're gonna meet up. And you want to practice that as, as a fire drill, just as how you might, the kids might uh, practice a fire drill in school. You want to practice that before your home also and make it as real as possible. Most fires usually happen when you're sleeping. So maybe you have the drill at night when everyone is in, in sleeping. Use that uh, smoke detector. Press the, the button, the test button, and, and pretend that the smoke detector is going off. And you guys are practice getting out. Maybe they train right? the dogs and to each other. you practice in it because you want to get familiarity with, with what you want to do, right? The more you practice it, the easier it's going to be. All right. If you wake up in the night and the apartment is full of smoke, you want to be able to tell them if the apartment is, is full of smoke, how you want to get out. You want to get as low to the ground as possible and try to get out because the best air. And breathing air is going to be low to the ground, right? So you want to maybe crawl on the, on your hands and knees and get to that to that exit, and then get out of the apartment or the house, right? And that's what you want to practice with the family. Maybe once a month, once every two months, where you practice, especially with the kids, wow. and you want to you want to practice with them with them getting out, right? Now the reason for having a common meeting place outside. It's for in case that someone doesn't show up, right? Maybe you know you went, um, but thank you. You, you went to bed, you wake up, there's a fire, everyone gotta get out, and you know that you're gonna meet at this spot on down the street. And for some reason you get there and, and, and someone is missing. You know that you could tell the firefighter. That's what you, you there for, is to inform the firefighters. We got out, but someone is missing. You don't want to go back in yourself to look for that person because you may never come back out and that person may not be in the apartment they might have come out right and, and maybe someone uh, went in and told me if it's a young kid someone might have saw them coming out and take them to a different spot not knowing they were supposed to be meeting you there right if it's an adult they might have got sidetracked and instead of uh, coming to the spot they, they may have tried doing something else and went somewhere else and but you not knowing that, you think they're inside, you go back in, and now you put yourself in danger when they already say. So you never want to go back into a burning building. You want to wait, tell the firefighters when they, once they get there that someone is missing and the firefighter is going to go look for that person. All right? And that's the reason for having that uh, meeting spot outside. Um, with the, the cold weather coming up, a lot of people use um, smoke, uh, uh, I'm sorry, space heaters to heat the home, right? Mm -hmm. And that's in itself is not bad. What is bad is if they might have bought the wrong type of space heater and also how they, uh, they use it, right? So if you're buying a space heater, if you know someone that uses space heater to heat the apartment or the room uh, warm in the winter time, you got to let them know, listen, Buy a space heater that when it, if you, it tips over, it have that uh, automatic shut off that would it shut it off, all right? You don't want to buy the oil attack that no matter how, what position it is, it's, it's going to be running, all right? You also want to kill them to keep it away from the furniture, the bed, the uh, the nightstand, the the, um, the drapes, the curtains, all right? The, the clutter in the room. You don't want to have that around 
the, the, the species and it's common reason, right? It produces heat and if something is on top of it for an extended period of time, that thing is most likely to, to go on fire. So you got to tell them, keep an area at least three feet in uh, circumference around that space heater. You don't want it close to the bed because in the middle of the night when you are, you wake up to go use a bathroom or something, you might throw that comforter off, cover that, that uh, space heater and and you might start a fire that way. So you also want to tell them be careful of where they put it, all right? Also, you don't want to plug it into an extension cord, all right? You want to plug it directly into the whole outlet. And the reason for that is that most extension cord that you will find does not is not rated to, to, to um, supply a space heater. All right, so our common uh, rule of thumb that we use is that if anything, anything that heats up or cools down something, you don't want to use an extension cord for it. You want to plug those items directly into a wall outlet. All right, so if you have a space here, you want it directly into a wall outlet. If you have a toaster, a microwave, right, directly into a wall outlet, your refrigerator, your dryer, right? directly into a wall outlet. Your AC in the summertime, directly into the wall outlet. You don't want to use an extension cord because what happens is that those uh, appliances put so much current that it overheats the wiring and that could cause the wiring to go on fire. And if you have carpet in your room or if you have anything that might be close to flammable on that, it's going to start a fire. All right, so anything that heats up or cool down, we plug directly into the wall. A lot of people um, get extension cords and to, to, I guess, power any item. You're running maybe the TV across the, on the other side of the bed or something like that. If there's no outlet where they want to put their, that TV, so they plug in the extension cord on one wall and run it across the room to plug in the TV. And then they look down like, uh, I don't like that wire there. Let me cover it up with an area rug or something like that. Yeah. All right? Bad idea because what happens? You cover it up, you don't see it, but it's still there and you walk in in that area, right? So eventually, by you walk in and the foot traffic, you will probably break the wiring in that extension cord. Yeah. And the rug on top of that, the, the wire, the extension cord is already generating heat in. Eventually, the wire is going to fray and you're going to start a fire when, with that extension cord, right? So if you want to use an extension cord, you know, hide it on the either route. Do not hang it on nails or around after a door across a room or, or something like that. You want to be able to be visible and, and, and we put it in a position where it's not going to be stepped on or, or, or you're ready to break that wire, all right? Yeah.